a local businessman has died. Mike Minton, who owns several area businesses, including Minton Tires, died yesterday afternoon following a motorcycle accident. Chief Sheriff's Deputy Aaron Evans tells WLAF that Minton wrecked his motorcycle on High Knob Road around 3 p.m. yesterday. When first responders arrived, Evans says Minton was alert and conscious. However, he then suddenly collapsed. Minton was then taken to the La Follette Medical Center where he was later pronounced dead. Mike Minton was 59 years old. Ann Ayers Colvin with the Campbell County Election Commission office calls it a good day of early voting yesterday. Combined numbers from Jacksboro and Jellicoe polling places total 195. Counting Friday, Saturday, and Monday, voting along with nursing home ballots, mail-ins, and military votes, the total so far is at 595. Early voting hours for Wednesday are 9 to 4 at the Election Commission office in Jacksboro and from 9 to 2 at City Hall in Jellicoe. Early voting runs through July 28th. And as always, WLAF brings you live coverage on the radio, the web channel, and right here on Channel 12 on election night, which will be Thursday, August 2nd. Four television news crews showed up for last night's Campbell County Commission, drawn by the promise of a debate over snake handling at a local church. The fireworks at the meeting, however, occurred before the snake handling question even came up. Local blogger Jerry Chadwell and commission critic James Slusher apparently conspired to take advantage of the media attention to again push Slusher's call for the county to set up an audit committee. Slusher asked to speak and when told by Mayor William Baird that citizens wishing to address the commission were supposed to do so at the workshop which Slusher had done already. He argued that an opportunity for citizens to speak was on the monthly meeting agenda. Slusher then asked for a legal ruling from County Attorney Joe Coker. Coker explained that since the item was listed on the published agenda, commissioners had to either allow citizens to speak or vote to delete that item from the agenda. With three commissioners absent from the meeting, a motion to delete the requirement allowing citizens to speak only received seven votes, one short of the necessary majority. Thomas Hatmaker then offered a motion to suspend rules and allow Slusher to speak, but Coker explained that since the motion to delete had failed, Hatmaker's motion wasn't necessary and Slusher should be allowed to address the commission. Slusher predictably repeated the same list of complaints he had aired at the workshop, listing a series of findings from the controller's audit that included being over budget on dirt moving for the jail, questionable bidding practices involving Valley View School when Dr. Michael Martin was school director, and a budget imbalance in the sheriff's department, among others. He repeated his call for an audit committee and challenged finance director Jeff Marlowe with a football reference, insisting the director of finance is on the defensive and I'm on the offensive. It's always the offense that scores points. Slusher, apparently under the misconception that he will continue in the future to be allowed to speak at regular commission meetings, added, I guess we've set a precedent tonight. Marlowe then asked to defend himself and the county against Slusher's attacks. He pointed out that the audit findings had mostly focused on problems that have already been hashed out in public, such as the alleged bid rigging by Dr. Martin in favor of a firm owned by former director of federal projects, Karen Bundren's husband. I am the person who brought that problem 
to the attention of auditors, Marlowe pointed out. He added, the Board of Education is presently in litigation in an attempt to recover the overpayments on that work. After Marlowe concluded a point-by-point -point answer to each of Slusher's charges, Hatmaker tried to keep the heat on Marlowe, asking him how he could justify paying to move the same dirt three times in groundbreaking work on the Justice Center. We didn't pay to move the dirt three times, Marlowe argued. We got into that situation by trying to save money as requested by the Financial Management System Committee of which Mr. Slusher was a member. By having personnel from the County Highway Department move the dirt, we had to pay for the work when it turned out the county lacked the equipment necessary to do the job. Bobby White, having heard enough of this back and forth discussion, suddenly made a motion to adjourn the meeting, announcing we've got business to conduct, not waste time on this. Jerry Chadwell, sitting in the audience next to Slusher, then told White, you ought to resign. Up yours, White blurted out, then challenging Chadwell, run against me. I don't live in your district, Chadwell replied. Well, move into it. White shot back. Mayor Baird then called for a five-minute recess to allow tempers to cool down. When the meeting reconvened, White apologized to everyone for his outbreak. Chadwell responded with another critical comment, at which point Mayor Baird warned the next comment from the audience, and I'll ask the sheriff to take you outside. As things settled down at last, the commission heard from a law firm seeking clients for a class action lawsuit against federally supported finance giants Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae. The attorney explained that the two financing entities had improperly been exempted from paying title and transfer fees on property when they foreclosed on mortgages. The state has so far failed to take action to recover the fees. We're seeking county governments willing to participate in a class action lawsuit, he explained. Attorney Joe Coker pointed out that the county's share of such fees is a small fraction of that collected by the state of Tennessee, only 2.75% of the total fees. On a $100,000 foreclosure sale, the county would receive $9, Coker pointed out. Bob Walden made a motion that Campbell County agree to participate in the lawsuit, adding, if the state receives most of the fees, we depend on the state for much of our funding. Maybe it will help us, Walden reasoned. The commission voted 12 to nothing to join the class action suit, becoming the first county to do so. The commission then debated a motion by Marie Ayers to withhold the monthly payments to the Jellicoe Ambulance Service until the budget is resolved. Alvin Evans voiced concerns that the county would be unable to provide quality ambulance service to that end of the county if Jellicoe Hospital suspends ambulance service after the county payments cease. After further discussion, about the possible implications of violation of a contract, Ayers changed her motion to place the matter on the agenda for the next budget committee meeting. Finally, the topic that had attracted all three Knoxville television news networks to Jacksboro was brought up on the agenda. Beverly Hall offered a motion that the commission pass a resolution asking Representative Dennis Powers to look into legislation that would repeal Tennessee's law against handling poisonous snakes at religious services. Hatmaker seconded the motion but suggested that such a repeal bill should include a requirement that churches must provide proof of insurance. Several commissioners made comments supporting religious freedom 
but express problems with legalizing a dangerous practice. We have a number of religions that condone practices that not allowed by law, Bob Walden pointed out. Hall's motion failed 10 to 2 with only Hatmaker supporting her. Three television camera crews quickly left the room to interview Reverend Andrew Hamlin, who sat impassively throughout the entire meeting with his wife and three children and other members of the Tabernacle Church of God. He quickly pledged to the TV reporters, I will go and pray about it some more and then try again. He added that his church will continue the practice of handling poisonous snakes whether the practice is legalized or not. And tonight is the community prayer meeting at the Old West LaFollette School. The meeting starts at 7 p.m. And that's a look at the news for this Tuesday. We'll be back with a press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. And taking a look at the press release from the Campbell County Sheriff's Department, 13 people have been booked into the jail in the past 24 hours. Timothy Lee Berry, 26, of Summer Road, La Follette, for possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, public intoxication, and possession of drug paraphernalia. 45-year-old Jeff K. Bond of West Prospect Street, La Follette, for aggravated assault. Robert Jean Bolin, 37, of Briar Creek Circle in Williamsburg, Kentucky, on an attachment for child support, two charges, and driving while revoked. 19-year-old Derek Billy Davis of West Walden Street, La Follette, for possession of drug paraphernalia, public intoxication, and on a KPS bench warrant. 21-year-old Joshua Ivan Deal of West Walden Street, La Follette, for violation of probation. Michael James Dilbeck, 45, of Dilbeck Lane and Caraval, for disorderly conduct. 22-year-old Christopher H. McCroskey, of Strong Road and Mascot for DUI. Rhonda Renee McCulley, 35, of McGee Lane, Jacksboro, for theft of property under $500. 31-year-old Marla Ann Moore of Blue Springs Road, La Follette, for theft of property under $500 and criminal trespassing. John Allen Pegram, 69, of Woodvine Street in Jacksboro, for domestic violence by assault. 32-year-old Chester B. Toller of Colonial Heights, La Follette, for violation of probation and on a capius. Zendel Lee Ward, 46, of Patty Hill Road, Caraval, for violation of probation. And last today, 34-year-old Anthony Ray Webb of West Chestnut Street, La Follette, entered the jail to serve court-imposed time. And that's a look at the news. Thank you for joining us and stay with us throughout the evening. We'll have more news, information, and entertainment to come your way. And be sure to join us again tomorrow evening at the same time. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to WLAF News at 530. I'm Lori Leach. It's time now to announce birthdays and anniversaries for this Tuesday afternoon. It's all brought to you by Eastside Pizza in Delhi, located in the Food Lion Shopping Center. Today we would like to wish a very happy birthday to Goldie Heatherly who celebrated her birthday on Saturday. Now Goldie is qualified to win a dinner for two from Eastside Pizza and Deli. Now we usually mention anniversaries too, but no one is celebrating a wedding anniversary today. Let us know who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary in your world. Just call us at 562-1450. That's it for birthdays and anniversaries. Thanks for joining us this evening. We invite you to stay tuned. Your news continues after this.